for two thirds of my farming life, I was going hell for leather with my foot on the accelerator trying to throw enough money around in agronomy to grow enough stuff to make a profit. And that was, you know, that was seen to be success. Industrial farming has, has led to the loss of 70% of organic carbon in soils worldwide. You know, Dad's shelves were full of things like, you know, an agricultural testament by Sir Albert Howard and, um, you know, Humus and the Farmer, uh, a guy called Friend Sykes. And so they were, I was aware of them, but I, I wasn't actually that interested because I'd, I'd adopted this industrial model of farming, which everyone else was doing. And that's what we tend to do, you know, we're, we're bits of crowd followers. When I got a little older, like in probably in my 40s, I began to reflect on, you know, what, what was my behaviour as a farmer doing for the planet? And I, I felt that it wasn't doing a lot of good things for the planet. So uh, I started looking around for other ways of doing things. The thing that, that we got hooked into was holistic management. So instead of looking at all the little bits of systems, we look at the whole and we realise that everything's connected. So. That's one of the really great features about managing holistically is you feel confident you can handle drought without going into a tailspin um, financially and socially. We were actually achieving our landscape goals during a drought which was incredibly encouraging. We haven't put any purchased inputs into this farm in 17 years, and we're actually growing more grass now than we've ever grown before. So, you know, that's not meant to happen, but there are lots of people like me who are doing those sorts of things, and they're finding that, that they're actually more profitable um, with less inputs, which seems contradictory compared to what we used to think. It's a huge thing for a farmer to know what's in front of him for, for five or six or seven months. You know, that's, we've never had that capacity, but now we can. And so, um, you know, matching your animals to the dynamics of the landscape, which is constantly changing, is a, it's a huge thing for your business. Good for the landscape, wonderful for your business, because your costs are low. And if you're selling early, if you choose to reduce some numbers, you're selling way before anyone's even thinking of selling because, you know, people, you know, we used to do it. You'd hang on, hang on, hang on, and think, oh, well, it'll rain in May, and then it doesn't rain in May, and you get caught, and everyone's trying to sell, and the market collapses. And then you, you say, oh, well, I'm not giving them away, so I'll go and spend, you know, their capital value to keep them alive. Turn the farm into a desert. And, you know, we, we, think, we used to think that was good. an agricultural system that's driven by science and the, the big push all the time is to increase yield. Now they'll say they're increasing production but actually they're increasing yield at the expense of production because production's about the respiration of everything living in the community and with simplified industrial farming systems the yield's going up but the production total is going down. But you know You've got to be careful you don't suddenly start, you know, you don't want to sound like a reformed smoker. Um, because, you know, I, I was ignorant of all the things I know now 10 years, 15 years ago. So I spent quite a lot of years in my life uh, getting on committees and trying to influence things at the government level. And after a number of years, I began to see that it was, it was terribly hard to get change at that level. But I think where the change is coming from now is from people making decisions in the supermarket. They want a healthy life for their children and you know, they're nervous about um, the sorts of impacts that industrial farming has, not only on the planet but also on the food that's produced that way. And the thing is, you know, we all think, well, that's our job. We've got to regenerate the landscape now. Um, but actually the landscape is always trying to regenerate itself and it's got that inherent capacity. So a, a lot of the time when you start managing like we do, you find yourself, it's not about what you're going to do, it's about what you stop doing that makes things come good. And it, it is a fact that, that landscapes can regenerate themselves. 
and they're always trying to be more diverse and it's us that stops them being that way. Mm -hmm.